everyone and uh, uh, welcome to my journey through some of the lesser known Sidney Lumet uh, movies. Today's is 1980s, Just Tell Me What You Want. Lumet had been, I, I did uh, a previous video on three of his 1960s movies that have sort of fallen under the radar. In the 70s, uh, Lumet had a, a, a fantastic streak of four straight movies, uh, Serpico and uh, um, yeah, Dog Day Afternoon and Network and uh, Murder on the Orient Express and almost in a row. Uh, some directors like Stanley Kubrick will tinker until they find, you know, to fine tune a, a, a movie for years. Other directors will wait around a little bit till they see a, a, a project that they really want to do. Lumet would do one film a year, and he was a workaholic in TV, and that continues on into the movies. The screenplay for um, Just Tell Me What You Want was written by J. Preston Allen, and she had already been a very successful um, uh, writer and novelist. This was based on her no one of her novels. She had written the stage version of... Uh, of uh, the prime of Miss Jean Brody. She also wrote the screenplay of the movie version that was very successful with Maggie Smith. She, um, she uh, would go on to make, I think, three more movies, uh, write, write three more movies for the Met, uh, in, in, including The Verdict and uh, Prince of the City. Um, uh, so uh, J. Preston Allen wanted Ali McGraw to be the star of this film, and it was kind of a strange choice. Uh, Ali McGraw was famous uh, for Love Story, one of the most commercially successful movies of all time. That was in 1970, and uh, then she married Robert Evans, who was the head of Paramount, I believe, at that time, and he was grooming her for some very significant roles when she left him for Steve McQueen. It was a big uh, Hollywood scandal of the 1970s. She made The Getaway with Steve McQueen, but hardly anything else. She only, I think she only has 15 total credits on, in her filmography. And really, uh, nothing after this of any great renown. This is really the film in which she's an actress and gives a performance. Uh, she thought of herself as a model. She didn't want to do the role. Um, she went to Sidney Lumet and said, suggested that they work together for a couple of weeks and if after that time Sidney Lumet thought she was capable of the, doing the role uh, then she would agree to do it. After about four days Lumet felt that she was she was right for this role and would be able to do it. For now she's playing a uh, she's the longtime mistress of a kind of media mogul type character. Uh, she's He's helped her in her her in television production, getting jobs, but she's very good at what she does as well. Um, the mogul is played by Alan King, who is a stand-up comic uh, co uh, comic uh, who appeared uh, often on Ed Sullivan Show and Johnny Carson. Uh, he was a very funny guy. He was always he, his comedy was sort of like he would rant against whatever has seemed absurd in the world around him. But he was an actor, he has about 40 credits. He had been, he'd worked for Sidney Lumet on Bye Bye Braverman uh, and, and the Anderson tapes. And he would, he would appear in a couple more of, uh, more of his movies as well. He also was in Martin Scorsese's Casino, but he never really was a lead actor. And uh, although this is really more Ally McGraw's uh, uh, movie uh, it's a significant role for Alan King, so it's a, kind of an odd pairing uh, for Alan McGraw and, 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 and Alan King. Uh, uh, Alan McGraw is, is getting dissatisfied with her life. She wants to move on, and, and, and she meets a, a screen, uh, or uh, he's a playwright, off-Broadway playwright, uh, and he's played by Peter Weller. And this was, I think, only his second uh, uh, film role. It's about seven years before RoboCop made him a star. Um, 
and he's the he, he has values he, he he's for for uh, bones the name of the character that Allie McGraw is playing um, he's like the white knight can I believe in a man can a man be somebody who does have values and, and is sensitive and uh, just the op he, he's like the, almost the opposite of what the Alan King character Max is playing in this in this movie uh, Max is there's, there's another significant actor in this in this movie, and that's Myrna Loy. Myrna Loy is playing Alan King's like personal secretary, long time, takes care of everything, understands him. She, he's the only, she's the only one that Alan King, Alan King's Max would put up with. She can say things to him, and uh, not get fired. Yeah, there, there's, there's a kind of you can't help thinking you see a little bit of Donald Trump in, in, in Max, uh, but Max has a very sensitive side. His, his uh, wife is having all kind of mental tr uh, troubles, and but he loves her, and it's clear that he loves her. He's also a crier. Uh, Simon Lumet was known to be a crier. He was unashamedly, unabashedly, he would cry, and many of the men in. Uh, in Lumet's films do cry, including Alan King, when he gets some disappointing news. He sits in his office, looks into space, takes out his, uh, his contact lenses, and then begins to sob, wail uncontrollably, and which shocks everybody in the office. Um, so there, he, he's, he's a complex figure, <laughs> Max. And uh, uh, in, in the, the the, the film begins with uh, Max going into Bergdorf's, and this is a film set in New York City. And uh, he, he, uh, Allie McGraw is coming out of the store as he goes in, and she follows him in, and she begins to batter him with her pocketbook all through Bergdorf's. And it was actually filmed in Bergdorf's. There was massive amount of damage done. That's how the film begins. And then about... You, and then we have a flashback that kind of shows us where all this, where, where this, uh, this uh, battle originated. Why, why is she doing that to, uh, to Alan King? And uh, it eventually goes out on the street and she's cheered on by, by a, a lot of women in the middle of Fifth Avenue. And um, because when, when, uh, when Bones is going to, when she finds out that Bones is planning to run off with this, this uh, um, playwright who is her kind of white knight, he, he, uh, he, he suddenly takes away all the things he's given her, and uh, this is her revenge. Um, so the film, the film is, uh, Roger Ebert gave it uh, kind of a mixed review, Janet Maslin in the New York Times as well, I think she called it a... Uh, a fascinating mess, and it's probably you know from a critical standpoint, I'm, I'm supposing it probably is kind of like a hit or miss. Uh, I thought the performances were excellent. I mean, it's the one thing you can always count on. I thought Alan McGraw was terrific, um, and Alan King was very funny. There was there's some very very uh, uh, kind of knowing moments in the, in the film, but of course, as far as gender politics. Uh, was that 41 years ago? A little bit different today. So you, you wonder, you know, what could Bones ever see in Max? And um, and then probably even in 1980. Now I saw the movie in 1980, and I, I liked it a lot. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it, I think it's 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 been unfairly neglected. And it is playing. You can see it on Amazon Prime, and I, I suppose it's streaming other places as well. But uh, I think it's a, it's a movie well worth seeing. It, it, it's an unusual movie, and it, for Sidney Lumet as well. Now, Sidney Lumet barely, uh, hardly ever made a comedy. Uh, I think he made one late in life with Vin, Vin Diesel, Bye Bye, Bye Braverman, it was supposed to be a comedy. He thought he, Sidney Lumet thought he, he failed miserably with that. I'd sure love to see that one again. But I enjoyed it in 1980, and I gotta admit, I enjoyed it just as much in 2021. So that's 1980s, just tell me what you want, and I'll see you guys next time.